in beautiful Massachusetts this week, visiting my family. But getting here, it was a little rough. If you follow my channel, you know that Yerby travels with me as my emotional support dog when I fly home. And it's never really been a problem. I always have his paperwork ready, his doc my doctor's note, and his health certificate, which was the way it's been for a long time, for the things you need to travel with an emotional support dog. Those are the requirements till yesterday. Now, this is totally my fault for not checking the regulations again after so long but apparently because a lot of people have been abusing the system and I can understand that they've tightened regulations and rules for traveling with an emotional support dog on a plane. It's like so cold out here compared to Florida. So everything's going good. We get to the airport on time, make it through security without any issues and then we get to the gate and I go in Take a little selfie with Yerby. We're all excited going home, see mom and the family. And so I take Yerby up to the little desk to kind of check him in and show them my paperwork and everything so there's no problems when I board. And the lady's like looks over them and then she's looking over them a little more, shuffling around, and then she calls her supervisor. <sighs> So I'm standing there and now I start to sweat because I just feel, I just sense that something's wrong but she's not saying anything. And she's trying to call the supervisor and they're not answering her call so it just made it longer wait and stress. She finally prints out some papers and hands them to me and she says, um, in order to fly with an emotional support dog, you need these particular papers filled out and it needs to be done and sent in 48 hours before you fly. So it's 30 minutes before my flight, so I'm totally not prepared for this. So I'm like, oh, ma'am, I'm so sorry, you know, I didn't realize that. Um, I usually fly Southwest and they have different rules. So she said, well, probably Southwest has updated their rules as well, because she said this happened back in July when they updated their rules. But I haven't flown with your B since May, so Last time I flew with him, everything went fine. So she called over his supervisor. Another woman comes over and she says, um, you know, you're not gonna be able to fly with him as an emotional support dog, but we can put him in a carrier and he can travel as a regular, um, you know, passenger dog, which would mean he has to go in the carrier, stay in the carrier, under the seat, the whole flight. Now, if you know your bee, that's not going to happen because he just can't stand to be separated from me and he will bark and go crazy. He's really good on the plane on my lap. Like he just lays there the whole time. So he's really well behaved as an emotional support dog, but separate him from me and he loses his mind. Hold on, pick this up in a second. I don't want to get hit by a car on this corner. They fly around this corner, man. So I guess you could say your bee and I kind of codependent when it comes to emotional support like he supports me and I support him and that's just how it is putting him in a carrier I knew he would freak out and bark the whole flight and I didn't want to be that girl that has everybody mad on the plane the whole flight I would have just lost my mind I would have I would have had a total meltdown if that were to happen so I'm really stressed at this point now the lady that was helping me, she was really nice. Um, you, I could tell she felt like really bad about the situation and, and she could tell how good Yerby was. She said he's so mellow because at this point I had him in a sling that I carry him in uh, around my shoulder and he just sits in the sling. So I'll, I'll put up a picture of that. This wasn't from this day, but I'll show you how he usually travels. So she was like, yeah, he's so good. Um, and then I said, well, he's gonna bark. He's going to really um, be upset if I put him in this carrier under the seat. Like, he's not going to be calm. I said, is it possible I can put the carrier on my lap at least so that he will be calm? She says, yeah, you know, maybe just pet his head or whatever. I'm pretty much sure this is not going to work, but I'm, I got to get on this plane. I got to go home, you know. So I'm like, okay, we'll give it a try. 
Now they were nice enough to give me this carrier for free, which was so kind of them because it was a really nice um, carrier from the airline. I'm not going to say the name of the airline because it's not about that. It's totally my fault. Again, I take total responsibility for this whole situation that I got myself into. So and then they're like, she tried to get the supervisor to waive the $100 fee for traveling with a dog that's not an emotional support, like a regular passenger dog, but she wouldn't do it. So we ended up having to pay $100 on the spot, $100 I didn't have to spend um, to get on the plane. So we ease him into this carrier, talking all nice to him. And if you know Yerby, if you watch my channel, like if he doesn't want to do something, he doesn't want to do something type of thing. You know, he's his own dog. So I was really worried, but he kind of went into it okay. We zippered up the top and we got in line to board the plane. They were already boarding the plane. They were rushing me saying, you know, we're going to take off soon. You got to get on this plane. I'm like, how's this going to work? So we get in line and then he starts, sorry, my arm is killing me. I don't have. So then he starts like struggling inside the carrier. He's, he's all like, it looks like I have a badger in this carrier. He's like scratching and flipping around and everything. And then he starts whining. I'm like, oh man, every second he's going to start barking and it's over. So just as I was literally stepping onto the plane from the little tunnel, he starts barking. But people couldn't really hear it yet because, you know, the engine, the sound of the plane and all the noise, you couldn't really hear him yet. So we sit in our seats and then I'm struck with an idea. Why don't I just act and pretend like he, he got on the plane as an emotional support dog? I mean, it's just survival at this point. I know he's going to bark the whole time if I keep him in this carrier. So I'm thinking, how am I going to make this plane ride good for everybody and not get kicked off the plane before it takes off? Because that's another thing. I was afraid they would kick me off before we even took off if they heard him barking and fussing. I quickly took him out of the carrier and I told my staff, Alex, I'm like, hide the carrier. And I sat him on my lap and just tried to act natural, like business as usual, sitting here with my emotional support dog on my lap. And the flight attendant, he just walked by, walked back. Walked by again, was doing, you know, whatever they do. And then he came up to me the third time. And he was like, um, do you have a carrier for that dog? Uh, I, this is when I just lost all, all my, I've been holding in my emotions this whole time. And at this point, I just lost all my emotions. And I just started crying. And it was real crying. I wasn't like trying to cry to the guy to, like for pity i was just i lost it at this point and i was like i told him like i always fly with them as emotional support and i you know they changed the requirements and i didn't know and so i didn't have the right paperwork so they made me put him in this carrier and he's gonna bark the whole time if he stays in the carrier and i'm just trying to get home and he was like it's fine it's fine i'm like he's so good he's like it's fine oh my goodness thank you to that man so much like he saved me that day and it was so many kind people that were placed in my way to help me out and get through that so it was a bad situation that I got through but I cried for about the next 30 minutes like all through takeoff all as we were reaching 10,000 feet I was just sobbing like all my emotions came out he was real nice he got me some water and stuff and um and I just sat and I put on my headphones and listened to music and started to calm down. But it was, it was a real, most just emotional because all the stress, you know, flying is so stressful as it is. And then that happening was just, it was more than I could take at that point. So big lesson learned, before you fly with your emotional support dog, always check the airline's requirements, even if you've flown before, check them again because they might have updated them and they don't really let you know. They don't really make a big deal of it. So lesson learned. I take full responsibility for the situation I was in and I'm just thankful I was able to get home with everything, with ERB, and everything was okay. So before I fly back, I'm going to make sure I have all my paperwork in order and it's in 48 hours ahead of time. And that's my lesson story of the day. Yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I love having all you on this vlog and your comments and everything. And thank you so much for supporting this channel. This is Jenna Ventures TV. Thanks for watching. I'll see you another day with another video. Okay, bye.